is a living lab for the future. People come here from all over the world and exchange their research and ideas. Yes And is a way to share their inspiring stories so that we can build a more awakened world together. Convoy and welcome again to Yes And. Today I'm here with Eric, a storyteller, a visionary and the creator of a magical village in Wales. Would you like to tell us a little more about you and your village, Eric? Okay, well, the village is called Kai Mabon. Uh, Mabon is actually uh, uh, one of the ancient deities of Wales. His mother is Modron, so he is Mabon, son of Modron, which means the great son of the great mother. And so this place, Kai Mabon, is a kind of place where he is, his spirit is there somehow, this ancient figure from uh, Celtic mythology. Uh, I've been there for about for 33 years now, nearly 33 years, and I think I just had a hunch that it was a beautiful place that something could grow and, and people would come. So a hunch like you hunch felt the like land a... was calling you yeah, in that was, kind of hunch? It was, it was actually, because I went there once and I had to let go of it. I went a second time, I had to let go of it, and the third time it came back to me. So the first building that I built there was a was a... Uh, an Iron Age or a Celtic roundhouse, a thatched conical roof with a stone wall, which is the kind of dwelling that people used to live in in Britain prior to the coming of the Romans. So for something like 3,000 years, people lived in roundhouses like that. So I wanted to build one, something of our ancestors, so that we could feel a connection with that ancient spirit of the land. And then after that, many other buildings were constructed, all out of what are referred to as natural materials, so straw bales, cedar logs, timber, cob, and, and all that. So it's a, it's a natural, uh, an area of natural building. And uh, now we have people come there, small groups, maybe 15 to 30, something like that. They come for a few days at a time. And because it's a beautiful setting, there's a river running down one side, there's a forest all around, below is a lake, above is the mountain. We're near the foot of Snowdon, which is the highest mountain in England and Wales. So it's a very special location and people love to come there and they, they, they get some kind of healing and inspiration from being in this place. And well. you have people living there permanently now, yeah, we like do, a commu we do. stable community? We have, a, we have a small community, it's just something between eight and ten people there all the time so it's quite small but it's enough to keep it keep it ticking over you know and um, I, I'm particularly interested in the mythology of ancient Britain if you like and um, so just recently with my partner Ang Harrod we've started uh, what we call Dardeni a Welsh word meaning renewal or revival or renaissance and it's the Dardeni spirit school and spirit is an acronym for a soulful and practical inquiry to reimagine indigenous tradition. You see, lots of people in Britain, you know, they're not satisfied with the old religions of Christianity. Some will seek inspiration from other parts of the world, from South America or Africa or Australia. But usually people from those cultures will say, look to your own roots. In Britain, it's not so easy because we've had so many waves of invasion and so much has been lost or destroyed. So we're going back to before the Romans came. You're right. Before the Romans came to the time of, of, of the Iron Age, if you like. And we have stories, the stories in a collection of work that's known as the Mabinogi, which go back to that time. They have roots in even going back as far as the Bronze Age, even the Neolithic. So we're trying to delve into those stories and at the same time, use the landscape because where we are in these the foot of the mountains they're the most spectacular mountains in britain and they protect the island of anglesey which is known as morn by the welsh the romans called it mona it was the heartland of the druids the druids were the high priests of the celtic people and people came from all over europe actually to study with them um, until they were almost wiped out by the Romans uh, eventually 55 AD. But nonetheless, that was a hub of the British Isles. It was a, it was a center of, a, of an ancient spirituality. So that's what we're exploring through the story, through the landscape, and through what remains of those traditions. So you're looking at this from 
the past, the tradition, but it sounds like also you are giving it a direction for the future. Yeah, it's, it's very much uh, where we come from, but where are we going? So, you know, we're, we're trying to show it at Kaimabon how you can live in harmony with nature, how you can cultivate beauty, how you can um, develop creativity, how you can be healed by mm -hmm. simply by the, the natural environment. We've got this beautiful river that does the job, you know, and <laughs> the, the oak trees and so on. And um, But maybe I'd, I'd like to just tell you one little thing, if I may, and that is that on the other side of the mountain, the great mountain Urwidva in Welsh, or Snowdon in English, there is an ancient sacred gathering place called Dinas Emrys. Its earlier name, its old name, was Dinas Afareon Dande, which means the fort of fiery higher powers. And this place has many different associations, including with dragons, with Merlin, and with prophecy. And Merlin is supposed to have come there as a boy, and after he released the dragons from their underground captivity, he uttered a prophecy which somehow miraculously got passed down through the ages and written down by Geoffrey of Monmouth, published in 1136, The History of the Kings of Britain. And I like to think that some of the lines in that prophecy, at least, have a great bearing on where we are now. And so if I can just give you the last part, the last part, it's about the goddess returning, really. Because earlier in the prophecy he says, though the goddess be forgotten, and so on and so on and so on. And then finally at the end he says, the healing maiden will return. Her footsteps bursting into flame. She will weep tears of compassion for the people of the land. Dry up polluted rivers with her breath. Carry the city in her right hand, the forest in her left, and nourish the creatures of the deep. With her blessing, man will become like God, waking as if from a dream. Heart open, filled with light, radiant face glowing like the rising sun, shining eyes like twin silver moons, radiant ears shimmering with song, shining lips that dance over words, words of magic that burst into the air becoming swallows. The soul shall walk out, the mind of fire shall burn, and in the twinkling of an eye, the dust of the ancients shall be restored. So those are wow. words from 1500 years ago, and somehow it feels to me like, well, the goddess is returning. You know, there's so many women doing amazing things these days. Uh, I think as I've heard someone say, this is the century for women to step up and, you know, be supported by the men, but to do the, the great things that are needed right now. Compassion, nourishment, balance, healing. Those are great qualities that we all need. We all need men and women, mm. yeah. sure. Yeah. And one more question for mm. you. So you've been through the temples. Mm. Is there anything in particular that struck you as you know, resonating with uh, this prophecy, with what you feel is your mission and your contribution? Well, you know, <laughs> I, I hadn't long been in the first temple. I'm not sure if it's what the name of the temple is. When I was in tears, I was just so moved by the beauty and the representation of humanity and nature, all the and is the one with all the animals in, you know, the whole of the earth. Yeah, yes. yeah, and looking at seeing the early peoples, but also seeing modern peoples in in the same place, you know, and such beauty and exquisite. Um, I don't know, all the attention to detail and the landscapes, you know, the snowy mountains and the beaches and the fields. And even in one place, I saw this viaduct with a train going across it. There's one like that just not far from me in North Wales. <laughs> and, and I was just totally, I don't know, I was, I was, I was weeping what, just from the beauty of it and how it, it just brings the memory of all the wonder and exquisite sort of depth of being that humanity has the journey that humanity has been, been on. on and I was pleased to see it somewhere Stonehenge and some of the early structures that people lived in and you know the, the farming and all of that you know the, the, there's a, something of the human story is there that's I suppose why you call it the temple of humanity it's it's very beautiful and I, I think that um, 
well, you know, I'm going to go out and tell people about it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And mm. we want to go and tell people about your oh, well, project. You. Mm. So if people there now watching this want to reach you and find out about how to come and spend mm. time with you, mm. where can they go? Do well, we do have a website, as we all do these days, oh. Kaimabon, C-A-E-M-A-B-O-N dot co dot uk there's information there about everything really including what we're offering we have a great program coming up this year actually of teachers uh, uh, doing um, remarkable workshops and retreats things like spontaneous storytelling and songwriting and the sweet darkness is one of the titles that's a beautiful title work. yeah <laughs> men's work and women's work we've, we've got you know we've got a good extraordinary actually it feels like after all these years it's coming into this, you know, there's a sort of maturity about it. You know, there's a ripeness about what we're being able to offer. Um, so I'm, I'm absolutely um, delighted that we've got there and that we've made this connection with you. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Eric. And I hope that this is the beginning of I a very so beautiful too. relationship mm. between mm. our two communities. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>